The life of a fully charged cell phone battery is normally distributed with a mean of 14 hours and a standard deviation of one hour. What is the probability that a battery lasts at least 13 hours? There are actually three different ways that you can find the answer to this question. First thing we wanna always do is draw the picture. So let's draw our normal curve. And don't worry if you can't draw it really well. For my curves, you always have to use your imagination. So this is normal with a mean of 14 and a standard deviation of one. So we're gonna put a 14 right here in the middle. And we wanna know the probability that something lasts at least 13 hours. So 13 is about right here. And that's a three. Sorry, this whiteboard does not like my touchscreen computer. At least 13 hours means 13 or more. So we're actually interested in this area, the area to the right of that 13. So again, I can find that area three different ways. The easiest way is an estimation because I can clearly see since my standard deviation is one, that 13 is one standard deviation below the mean. So if I use the empirical rule, I know that if I go one standard deviation above the mean, I'm gonna use a different color here. If I go one standard deviation above the mean, I know that within the mean plus or minus one standard deviation, that this area is 68%. And so that means that there's 32% outside of that in the two tails. And so each tail is one half of 32 or 16. So that tells me that this tail, let me get another color here that the green part here is 16%. So the area that I'm interested in is 68 plus 16, which is about 84%. Or if I've asked for the probability, it's 0.84. So I could estimate that answer to be 0.84. I'm going to be pretty close, but not exact when I use the empirical rule. So that's the first way I could solve that. The second way is I could use a table of probabilities. For that, I need the z-score. Well, the z-score, again, it's minus one because this is one standard deviation below the mean. Remember, the z-score is equal to your observation minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So that's 13 minus 14 divided by 1, which is negative 1. If I look on my standard normal table of probabilities, that's often table A in your textbooks, and I look at minus one, that's gonna give me the area to the left of my data point. So that's actually gonna give me this area. And my textbook tells me that's 0.1587. So to get the area that I want, the area that I want is the, the red area or the blue plus the green area. So that's one minus 0.1587. So the area that I want is equal to one minus 0.1587, which 
is equal to, that should be an equal sign, um, 0.8413. Now, the easiest way to find this is if you use your calculator. I would suggest always using your calculator if you have it. The TI-84 is, in my opinion, the best calculator for this, uh, for these first level statistics courses, because it's very simple to use and it does everything you need. You could also use a TI Inspire, a TI-83, or other calculators for this. But it has to have the function normal CDF on it. So we can use normal CDF to get to that on your TI-84. You're going to do second bars. I'm sorry that I can't write so good on this. And you want option two, which is normal CDF. It's going to ask you for your lower limit. Your lower limit is 13 because that's, we want the area 13 up to as far in the positive direction as we can go because it was at least 13 hours, 13 or more. So our lower is going to be 13. Our upper, the upper is always the right limit. Since we're going into the right forever and ever and ever and ever, we're going to use 9999. Nine, nine, nine. We just need a big positive number here. Now, I could use a mean of zero. Oh, well, since we're using 13, we want to use our mean is 14, the, the mean of this normal curve, and our standard deviation is 1. So we have mu 14 sigma 1, then put in paste. And the answer that you're going to get is, again, this 0.8413. So... My recommendation is that you use normal CDF. Normal CDF is used to find the area under normal curves. But you could also, because our z-score was an integer, we could use the empirical rule to find that area, or we could use the tables. Please let me know if you have any questions feel free to send me a message on Wise Ant if you have any questions.